friends and welcome back to this episode. I am actually recording this from Rome and I have the cutest little backdrop if I don't say so myself. So if you're not already watching the YouTube video version of this, you might want to just for pure vibes because also this chair is really funky and I really like it. <laughs> Um, okay, so today we are talking about the four flavors of the feminine, and I'm excited to dive into this. I did a podcast post on this a little bit ago, and it went off. You guys loved it, so I figured it was time to kind of jump in and do a little episode on it. I will say that there is a much more extended version of this in Queen Alchemy, where I go into a bit more depth. We go through different archetypes, and we do all the different things on these kind of different flavors um, of the feminine, different archetypes. And I kind of want to make another whole section of like feminine archetypes um, in a Monica way. So I'm sure that's going to be coming up sometime soon, and you guys will get it. That's definitely something that's been on my my mind because I feel like for a lot of us, what can happen is we really pigeonhole ourselves into what the feminine should be. You know, we should be soft. We should be emotional. We should be this. We should be that. And we can really create this very pigeonholed look of how it is to be feminine. And I know that a lot of you do this because I've, I've picked it up before years ago. Hence, I now always say this to you guys, um, where I realized that people were thinking that they had to kind of embody what I embodied because then they'd be feminine because I'm feminine. And I really want you guys to understand that there is no one way to present your femininity, right? There is no one way to express your femininity. There is no one flavor of the feminine that is better than others. Your authentic expression of the feminine is correct, right? Because if you are trying to be feminine from a way that someone's told you how to be feminine, but it feels inauthentic for you, you're literally not being feminine because the crux of femininity is authenticity. It's body-based energy flow, right? And so if you're in your head trying to be somebody else, you're actually being masculine. You're like, put it, you're, you're thinking about how to act. You're not feeling how to act because you can't fake your feelings, right? Your feelings are going to be authentic. So when you're driven by your authenticity, you actually can create your own kind of feminine blueprint. And I it's funny how these topics all like align when I'm like in this, whatever, I don't know how to describe it, but yesterday I was doing an Instagram story and now I'm doing this and I'm like, huh, it all kind of links. And someone, one of my one-on-one -on -one clients sent me a voice message yesterday that was like kind of linked to this. I'm like, I feel like it's, there's always like some collective energy that where it's just things are flowing similarly over a certain period of days. Anyway. So yesterday on my Instagram stories, I was just walking down an alleyway in Rome, trying to find us dinner because the fiance can't walk. If you saw my Instagram story, we we're in Greece and um, we both fell down this gap of the infinity pool. So you know how infinity pools are, they're like on the edge of something and you can't like, you know, you can't walk on the side where the water flows down of the infinity pool, that drop where the water goes down. You can't walk on that side because that'd be dangerous because then you'll fall down the fucking hole. Well, we were staying at this really nice hotel, like beautiful hotel, but their response to the whole situation was appalling. And this infinity pool is in the middle of this like big outdoor patio area that we had. And if you've been watching my Instagram stories, you would have seen the picture. Um, and I actually did a reel the other day where I'm in like a red long kind of linen dress and I'm on the phone and you can see the pool there. So you'll get what I'm talking about, but you cannot see this infinity drop. And so the pool is in this middle, the middle of this big patio and you can walk on the side of the pool where the infinity drop is. In fact, it's a full walking area. There is a path right there. There is chairs to sit on, like a whole thing. And it's all white. So because it's all white, you cannot see this big gap where the water flows down. And so I was walking the other day in the patio and just off in the fucking days probably. And I fell down the fucking gap. One leg is up here where you're walking, the other leg is down at the bottom of the pool, essentially where the water flows down. And the camera that I'm holding in my hand goes straight into the pool. And if you see this whopping bruise right here, which actually used to be so much worse, it's getting better. This bruise was caused by like my arm going out and whacking into the side of the pool where the water flows over, like that little bit where the water flows. I whacked it into there. And I'm when I tell you this bruise has caused me a dead arm in my right arm, I mean it. Like the whole bicep, I couldn't even like lift shit. I couldn't even like do my bra up because the bruise was so painful. It's like my, it's almost like I ripped my muscle in a way. And the bruise goes all the way into like my pec area, like behind my breast, like that whole muscle there was so fucking painful. Then the next day at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, mind you, my gorgeous fiance 
is, you know, out in the morning trying to take like do content, whatever, like the sunrise vibes, etc. We're also leaving to fly to the air, go to the airport in that whole hour. And he's walking and mind you, he's got a lot more awareness than I do most of the time. And so he actually looks where he's going, whereas I'm like off in a daze. And he also then falls down with both legs. Both legs fall down. The big, our big camera that's like fucking expensive. So midair, he moves the camera. I'm like, how did he do this? Like, this is a fucking man. Like just the, like the acute awareness in these moments of like death. (laughs) So he moves the camera from his right hand to his left hand so that the camera doesn't go in the pool because that would have been, I can't even think about it. It literally makes me want to cry. So he moves the camera into his left hand. So the camera then hits the tiled like paper, like the area where you walk hits that. We actually have a bit of a dent in the lens, which is really unfortunate. And his both feet go in and his whole body is drowned in water because of course he's like 10 times the weight of me. So it drops down and the water just like splashes all over him. And we actually thought he, he we actually think he might've broken his foot because his, his ankle's very swollen. Um, and classic man, like I'm fine, I'm fine, but like literally unable to walk. And the other morning he wakes up with this ginormous pebble bruise. There was no bruise for like two days and all of a sudden it came, or maybe like a day and then all of a sudden it came up and he just, he kicked the doona with his foot, um, you know, and so his foot then came out of the doona and I caught it out of the corner of my eye and I literally was like, <gasps> and I was like, oh my God. And then I ran and got the camera and took a picture. I won't show you guys the picture because nobody wants to see a foot, but it was like half the size, like half of his foot, right in the arch of his foot. Oh my God, it makes me feel sick when I think about it. Anyway, so we can't really walk, um, which is very unfortunate. So I have literally no idea where I was going with that story. I can't remember why I started telling you guys that. I don't know. But anyway, we're on this trip and it's going really well. (laughs) Let's talk about the four flavors of the feminine. I literally don't know why I was talking to you guys about this. Um, Anyway, so yesterday I was back to where I was going. Yesterday I was walking down this alleyway doing an Instagram story and I was sharing with you guys kind of on the lines of the four flavors of the feminine. And that is basically when you don't grow up with a positive feminine role model. Um, and, you know, not like, you know, your mom could be a great role, role model, a really beautiful woman, very positive, positive role model. But if there's not that positive feminine role model where this is what it means to be and this is what it looks like and this is what it feels like to be this like strong, powerful, feminine woman then you don't have that clear roadmap and direction to do it for yourself. So then kind of what happens is you will, you'll mold yourself to who you, to what you see in other people. So you'll then create this kind of perception of what it means to be feminine, or you won't know what to do. You have no roadmap, you have no blueprint. So then you just aren't feminine. You go into masculine, right? Because that's also easier in today's world. It's easier to be this hyper masculine woman. It feels safer than being this beautiful, open, feminine woman. And so what I really like to remind you guys about is that you want to be creating your own feminine blueprint. And in my program, Queen Alchemy, which is opening up and is open next week officially, but you can join early. Um, Sorry, I just had to look at the date. You can join early. The earlier that you join, the earlier that you can get into the content, which is a good thing because there's so many live calls. So you like want to try and get ahead if possible. Um, The beautiful thing about that program and really any work that I do around like trauma healing so that you can be embodied in your femininity is you want to create your own feminine blueprint because my expression of femininity is not necessarily your authentic expression of femininity femininity and so when you just pick up somebody else's blueprint and try and put it into your own you're not really doing what you're meant to be doing right what you're meant to be doing is creating your own blueprint that feels correct and right and in alignment for you and what a lot of people i notice doing is they sell this like this is how it means to be feminine, do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. And it's like, well, that's great. That might work for you. But if somebody has a really different kind of personality or a different way of of self-expression or different interests and different ways that they enjoy themselves, and that's not really going to feel authentic to them, right? I have so many different flavors in myself that I want to express. Like I want to have a fucking farm with chickens, but I also want, you know, to have my own apartment in New York again. So I can be like living it up there. I want to, I want to like do nothing all weekend, but I also want to do like X, Y, like there's just, so, I mean, that's my rising Gemini. There's probably just so many fucking polar opposites that you guys would just, you, your head would blow if you actually, if I actually express them all to you. But what's really important in that is that because I've allowed myself to fully accept that I want so many of these different things, 
it's allowed me to get out of this idea of this is the way that it, this is the way that I should be expressing my femininity, or this is what it means to be feminine. Because I used to have this thought that I had to dress a certain way, but that was always a conflict within my body because I never had this like one style. You guys have probably picked this up about me. And this is something that I actually expressed to my fiance that I love that I've developed into my brand. And that is that I do not have one style or one taste. And I express this through my branding, which you guys have probably picked up on. It's like there are beach vibes, then there is city vibes, and there's like a cute floral dress, then there is like full chic vibes, then there's a suit, then there's like this. Like there's just so many different random things. There is kind of no coherency in a way because the, co- the only thing that's really coherent in my business is me. But I like that there's no one style of brand in terms of the look part of it, there's definitely a style in terms of the feeling part of it and the attitude and the words, right? That's a really important part of a brand, but there isn't one style in terms of a look because that isn't me. And frankly, the feminine is so multi multifaceted, so fucking chaotic that there isn't really one style of her. You got to think about it, ladies, and that we have a, and gentlemen, if you're listening to this too, this is like really helpful to also understand your woman more. We have the four different phases of our cycle which means that technically there's a different version of you every different phase of your cycle. And so if you were to relate that into your life, there's so many different flavors of you in your life that get to be expressed. And so many of us feel, especially through our style, that we have to stick to one style. It's like you're boho or you're minimal or you're this or you're that or you're chic or you're all black. And it's like, I literally have a different style every day. I, I, I don't know what my style is. I've always had this where it's like, I don't know what music I like. I don't know what my style is. I don't know what my taste is like. I want 10 different houses with all, with all different styles. I, I like eclectic, but I like a farm vibe, but I like minimal, but I like contemporary, but I like antique. Like, I like too many fucking things. And so many women, they will uh, diminish that part of themselves. Like there's something wrong with them. Like they have like an inability to choose. Or they have an inability to stick to one thing. Like, why is my style always changing? Why does, why do I always change my mind? Why can't I just stick to one thing? You can't stick to one thing because you're a woman and that's okay, right? Men can stick to one thing because they are disciplined. They have a direction and they are committed. Now we still have commitment, discipline, and direction, but we don't have it expressed in the same intensity as them right? If you look at, for the majority of examples, if you go into a man's bedroom, what do we all most of the time see? We see two fucking pillows, maybe four if you're lucky on the bed. We see the bed made where the sheets are fully pulled up underneath the pillows. There really isn't much like fluff and pizzazz. It's very simple. It's doing a job. It's there for a purpose. Whereas if you go into, well, our bedroom now, which obviously like this, this was the same kind of thing pre meeting him as well. There was like, 50 fucking pillows on the bed. There's three different blankets folded in different ways. You know, there's, there's different sheets for X, Y, and Z. Like, there's just so many things going on because we are aesthetic based beings, right? We want lots of things because we like to be in our senses. So we don't want this like boring, empty less colorless life where we are stuck in doing this one same thing or having one same, same style every day because it doesn't excite us. You know, we all, you know, when you open up your wardrobe ladies and you look at your clothes and you're like, I have nothing to wear. And to a man, that's like, you have so many fucking clothes, just put something on. But it's like, no, it's not about just putting something on. It's like what you're saying in, um, I've got nothing to wear is there's nothing here that makes me feel the way that I want to feel today. And that is a clear classic example of the difference between a woman's experience through her life and a man's experience. So when you as a woman think that you have to pigeonhole yourself into one into one kind of corner, it minimizes the experience that you could have in life. Now, I really want to emphasize that that when you minimize yourself and you put yourself in one corner, it's not really, it's a choice, but it's a subconscious choice, right? It's a somatic choice. It's a choice of safety. It's if I put myself in this corner, I'm going to have more safety, acceptance, validation, love, whatever from the people in my life. So let me just shove myself in this corner because then things are going to make more sense and then I'm going to feel safer. In reality, we don't actually get the inner freedom and, and the peace that we crave, but it gives us the illusion that we're having it. It gives us the illusion that we're going to get it. So what I really want to challenge you guys to think about is how you are 
pigeonholing yourself in your expression of femininity to make yourself feel like you have this illusion of safety and therefore realizing any wounds, blocks, traumas, whatever underneath that beliefs that are inhibiting your ability to feel safe in being the full expression of yourself, meaning that you have maybe 10 different styles, that there is no coherency in the one brand style, et cetera, et cetera. And this doesn't mean, ladies, that if you do have coherency in your brand where it's like, but I do have only one style, I do like this one style of house, that's completely fine, right? R remember, like I'm different to you. So if you, if you only like a contemporary house, you don't like anything else, then that's completely fine. There's nothing wrong with you, but it's also something worth exploring is do I actually like other styles, but I've told myself that I have to just like, what style do I like the most? And I'll just stick to that style. You know, for a lot of us, that's even what we do. It's not that we, it's, you know, maybe you don't want a farmhouse and a contemporary house, let's just say, but, um, you've also not even let yourself think like, yeah, I do really like a farmhouse vibe. You've made yourself think that because I like contemporary a little bit more, I have to just stick to that for everything across the board. And I can't buy this item because it doesn't fit the brief of contemporary. Um, so just something to think about. And obviously those underlying things around what is making you feel unsell unsafe to break outside that box of the one flavor of femininity that you've expressed, the trauma underneath that is something that gets to be healed. Um, and Queen Alchemy would be the best program for that or possibly one-on-one depending on the extent of your trauma. Okay, so let's jump into the four different flavors of the feminine before I just keep rambling on about my lack of brand coherency. So the first one that I identify especially with on in that ovulation period, right? I'm going to kind of tie this a little bit to the different phases of your cycle as well, because it will help is fiery. We all probably know that I'm a pretty fiery person. Uh, my fiance would agree with that as would my parents and all my friends. <laughs> um, and probably my team. Sometimes when I say my, they see emails of the people, they're like, she is straight to the point. So I'm definitely fiery. And I really identify with that. And this doesn't mean that you then need to be fiery in order to be successful or in order to have a certain amount of money or in order to be any kind of version of yourself. you got to also remember friends that like your, your upbringing and your personality is going to have a really large influence on these different flavors that I've made up. So these flavors are, by the way, made up by me. I haven't gotten them out of a book or anything like that. So if you are going to reference these in your own business, please make sure that you reference me because these are made up by me. So unless you are, you know, a certification student and you could join the waitlist for that, you need to make sure that if you use something of mine, please, you know, express that it's been mine because we've had issues in the past. People just copy and paste and let me tell you, they know about it. Um, so fiery, let's jump back to it. So this fiery uh, flavor of the feminine, how she is expressed is that she has a lot of confidence she has a lot of self-expression in her boundaries. So she's super aware of her boundaries and she has got no problem expressing them. She definitely enjoys more of that eroticism and kinkiness in the bedroom and just in her sexual dynamic with her partner. And spontaneity is a really important thing. She does kind of get off to a little bit of adrenaline. So that spontaneity of last minute plans or a last minute trip is something that she doesn't just fantasize about, but then freak out in the moment. She fantasizes about and then actually loves it in the moment. Because a lot of us, you know, we want this spontaneous relationship, but then when he hasn't booked the flight three days prior, we're freaking the fuck out because of our hyper need to control. I know a lot of you probably relate to that. And that is a control thing of a lack of trust in yourself, in the universe, and then also in him. So you know, when there is a lack of trust in him, it's also a lack of trust in yourself as well. It's really interesting how it's mirrored. So something to work on for any hyper control freaks. So again, with the fiery is that she enjoys being dominated in the bedroom and playing more of that submissive role, which we all fucking love, I'm sure. But she really anchors into that submission, but she has so much spice with her submission. So the submission is from a really confident and empowered place. It's not from obviously a disempowered place, right? It's really confident and, and empowered. This kind of flavor of the feminine, she can struggle to relax and just to kind of do nothing unless she's put 
in like a kind of a forceful, sexy way, put in that position by her partner. So for her, it's really attractive to be with a partner that can dominate her and that can kind of force her into that submission. That turns her on. She wants, she like, she already has so much dominance within her through her fieriness. So she needs somebody that can basically over dominate her dominance, if that makes sense. Um, and then with that, she really wants in her relationship a partner in crime. She isn't looking for a boy to mother. She isn't looking for just some equal partner. She's looking for a fucking partner in crime and to really embody that like power couple kind of energy. Um, She really can sometimes struggle more so on the shadow side of things. So, you know, if you're not embodied in that very healed fiery feminine on the shadow side of things, what I've noticed for this kind of flavor is there can be a lot of struggle around relaxing into her feminine energy and just balancing that feminine energy with her intensity. The intensity can be quite overwhelming for a lot of people um, and also for herself. And so because of that intensity that she naturally has through her fieriness, it can cause her to feel like there is an imbalance in her ability to just relax and let go and be in her feminine because she's just so go, go, go all the time. And so it's important for her that she obviously has a partner that isn't just lazy and does fucking nothing because that would be super out of balance for her. And that would make her then feel like she has a child to look after. She needs somebody that is able to have that strong nervous system where they can match her energy, but also ground her and pull her out of her dominance and and more into submission. Like that's a real craving of hers is to be pushed and kind of forced into submission in a little bit of a healthy way. If you identify with this fiery um, feminine, it's really important that you are careful of burning out and that you really try and prioritize quality time, uh, sorry, quiet time and obviously quality time with yourself, with your partner, because you can get really sucked into projects and you just fucking go like a rocket and you only come back down once you've like run out of fuel, right? So you want to try and balance that by not just blasting off to space all the time, but being a little bit more stable with your output. I have a good reason for quickly interrupting this episode, and that is because I have so many freebies on my website. And if you haven't downloaded all of them, I don't really know what you're doing because obviously you listen to my podcast. You probably follow me on Instagram. Hopefully you follow me on Pinterest and YouTube as well. And if you're not already aware, the amount of free content that I pump out for you is somewhat insane. And everybody always comments on this. Like, how the hell do you do it? I'm like, honestly, I don't really know. Anyway, point is, is that on the website, there is a huge collection of incredible meditations. And some of them are relaxing meditations, but some of them are these high vibe ones where you are like jamming out in the car, fully reprogramming your subconscious and fully shifting your somatic experience for the day. So your energy and they're game changing. I love them. Additionally, there's also um, journal prompts. There is an incredible PDF journal prompt guide thing that that is directed towards those of you that are really working on embodying your inner feminine CEO, right? So obviously I have my program, The Feminine CEO, but this is a free journal prompt guide where they are my journal prompts that I use pretty regularly, I will say, um, in the morning when I'm setting myself up for the day, when I am wanting to focus on calling in more success in my business for that day or for that week or for that year or whatever it is, these journal prompts are epic. So if you go to the link below in the episode, you will find the link to my uh, like kind of online store where you will see all the things that you can download, all the freebies. We're actually updating some of them too. So you can always go back in a couple months and check to see if they've been updated and then re-download the updated version. But yeah, I'm like, why would you not have them all? Save them on your phone, save them on your laptop, have them there as an easy resource for you to refer to. So the Feminine CEO journal prompts are something that is new. They've only, they have only came out a few months ago. So if you haven't already gotten them, then make sure that you do. And they are banging. And also I just feel like the whole guide is the fucking vibe. Like I've got the little printed guide on my desk and I'm like, this is kind of sex. So yeah. All right, let's jump back into the episode. Okay. So the next one, let me just get a sip of water is flowy feminine. Now with the flow, I love the flowy feminine and the flowy feminine is something that I have really learned to embody a lot more. And that, and that embodiment has been because I've allowed myself to express all the different sides of myself. I haven't thought that I, and you know, for me, a really, a really great way to like 
what's worked for me is embodying more of that flowy feminine is my style and changing my style throughout my cycle, throughout the month, throughout my life, et cetera. And I used to think that I had to, you know, only have one style of clothing, like I was sharing with you before, in order to be more of this flowy. I really demonized my fieriness because I thought that it made me just masculine by being fiery. But I really want you guys to know that if you are more of a fiery constitution, it does not mean that you are more masculine and that you're not feminine. You actually need to learn how to harness the fieriness in a way that is sexy and sensual and spicy and feminine, right? The flowy feminine is more, and like the girly feminine, which I'll go through in a little bit, that kind of flowy girly expression, that's all, that's typically the more kind of stereotypical feminine expression that a lot of us see and we compare ourselves to. So when we're not, you know, in these like pink frilly, frilly dresses, like running around in a paddock all day, we think that we're not being feminine, which isn't actually true. Femininity is not about a look. It's about an energy and an expression. So with the flowy feminine, this woman is really in touch with her softer side and she really does enjoy connecting in nature and having a slower pace of life. So she does prefer, generally speaking, to be by a beach or, you know, live in the countryside. She prefers that slower pace in her lifestyle that just feels more right and more at home in her nervous system and in her body. She definitely identifies more as a kind of goddess style um, than a, you know, a queen or this like super sexy, spicy kind of version of herself. Um, and if you know your sensual or your sexual blueprints, which is something that I go over in Queen Alchemy, she will prioritize her energetic sexual blueprint over her sexual blueprint. So Queen Alchemy girls will kind of understand this. Um, but basically this kind of woman that's more flowy, she's really going to prioritize her energy and her energetic feelings over just sexual feelings, if that makes sense. So I kind of like to put this into a more tangible example. If she is feeling really tired, she's more likely to be like, babe, I can't tonight. Like I'm really tired. I just want to make a cup of tea and go to bed versus fiery feminine will be tired. And be like, babe, I'm exhausted. So can you just like fuck my brains out? It's just a different way of expressing themselves, a different way of getting their needs met. Okay. Um, this kind of woman, to give a tangible example of, of flowy, she prefers picnics over a really fancy dinner, for example. And this is, I'm going to get to it, but like she can still want a fancy dinner. It's just like on the average Tuesday, she'd much prefer a more intimate, quiet night than going out to a fancy dinner with lots of stimulation around her. Now, more on the shadow, the, the shadow side of things for the flowy feminine, you need to be mindful, this is you, to not neglect your needs and your desires when you are in your relaxed state. So what can happen for these kind of women is that they can get really swept up in flow that they neglect their purpose or their passion or their needs and their desires because they basically just kind of get addicted to relaxing and addicted to the flow. And I see this happen a lot with women in business that really identify with this flowy side of things where the lack of direction and discernment and commitment, masculine, causes them to be in this cycle of kind of like self-hate, but also this weird catch-22 where they're like, they hate that they're not doing anything, but they also just don't know how to do anything because they're like, but I want everything to be in flow. And it's like, oh, sorry, honey, not everything is just like always in flow in business. And as you guys know, that flow in your business, it comes with the masculine structure and it comes after you have basically earned that entitlement where you've actually built the foundations of your business. So in the beginning, you've got to like put some fucking effort in to building your business, right? Um, the last thing that I'll say for like the shadow side of things to the flowy feminine is like I said before, you just must main, must ensure that you maintain some kind of direction and not get too swept up in that pleasure. Um, because although it feels really nice, you also can go into that cycle of self-hatred a little bit, which I don't want you guys to have. All right. So the next one is girly. So the, the girly and the flowy is very similar. The flowy is, I'm going to say, more like earthy, grounded, like in nature, whereas girly is more like, I want to be pampered. Like, let's get my nails done, like bows in my hair. Like, I want to dress. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a different expression. Like, that girly feminine can really enjoy living in a city, but she's not, you know, like being spicy all the time, like uh, the fiery 
the fiery woman, she's like out shopping, getting her nails done, out for cocktails with the girls. Different expression is all it is. So for the girly, she enjoys feminine aesthetics, dressing up, being pampered. She really avoids, so unlike fiery, she avoids danger and adrenaline. Like that is not a thing. She does not like that. You know, what's an example? Like the water's too cold, I'm not getting in, that kind of thing. Whereas, you know, fiery might be like, fuck it, the water's freezing, let's have a nice bath. And she just jumps head in. She doesn't give a flying shit. Girly cares, her nervous system maybe is a little bit more fragile, or she's just like, no, I don't want to get my hair wet. Nothing is wrong with any, nothing is better than the other, and neither is right nor wrong. It's just a different level of expression. She enjoys having fun and being really playful, but is not super, super highly sexual. Now, it does not mean she doesn't want sex, right? Really key thing. It does not mean she doesn't want sex. It means that she isn't, you know, grabbing her partner's penis. 10 times out of the day, right? It's like cute little pecs. She wants more cuddles and she wants more dick, for example. And that's just like, I'm giving you an example. Does not mean that it's necessarily you because you can have a blend of these feminine flavors. That's why I gave you guys the intro to this podcast. You are not, do not pigeonhole yourself. If I'm only girly, I'm only this, I'm only that. You actually want to allow yourself to express all these different sides of yourself. So the girly version of you might come up more so, you know, in your luteal phase, for example, or on your period. Everyone's a little bit different. Um, When it comes to the partner side of things, the girly feminine really does prefer to be with a man that is very uh, protective and provides a lot of security. Now, fiery also wants protective and security, right? But the fiery feminine, if we were to just like imagine her guy, her guy's also one that like gets home, rips his tie off, pushes her up against a wall and fucks her brains out, right? And has a little bit of adrenaline in there. Whereas girly might be like, guy comes home, she go- comes up, gives him a little peck. He gives her a hug, you know, and then maybe they slowly make love that night in bed. Completely different scenario. The, the execution is different. The goal is the same right? The goal is love and connection. The execution is just different. Um, so if you as the girly archetype are wanting to explore more of your different sides of yourself, it's about allowing yourself to slowly push the edges of, so slowly push the boundaries of what your edge is and expanding your nervous system, right? Because often this kind of girly archetype can definitely live more so in her comfort zone because she really seeks that safety. She just wants stability and fun and like cuteness and like, woo. And she doesn't feel like pushing the boundaries, right? She doesn't feel like pushing herself. And so what that then means is that you definitely want to be working on healing things under there that allow you to feel unsafe to step outside of that girly comfort zone. The last one is the most important and it is called what I call Wonder Woman. Also, I fucking used to love Wonder Woman and the outfit was a vibe. So I call it Wonder Woman because basically Wonder Woman, she like shapeshifts, right? We know the movie. She literally is a shapeshifter in that she goes from, like, if you know the classic Wonder Woman, she goes from being, I think it was the assistant, like she worked in the office, right? It's like the old school version, like the series. It was a series, right? Yeah, it was a series. The old school version. And then she, you know, will run out into the back alley and it's like, do do do. And then she like does her little thing. The crown comes on and like, boom, she's fun woman saving the world. And so it's about like, you want to be able to shift through all the different versions of yourself. So if you were to have the kinky side, the flowy side, the girly side, I mean, you could add more in there, then that allows you to like move through them. So if I was to be saying like, what side am I today? I am probably today more of my flowy side, to be honest. I would say more flowy girly. Uh, kinky side, when would that have been? Maybe, oh, I would say um, not yesterday, the day before, I was definitely more in a kinky vibe. Um, sorry, not kinky, lol. Uh, well, that too, <laughs> a fiery side. Um, and so I allow myself to really shift day to day. And it also depends on like my calendar. My calendar for work can actually influence how I'm feeling that day as well as my cycle and my sleep and what's been going on in my life. Like so there are so many determining factors to how you feel and how then you execute during the day and how you shop during the day, which is why you do not want to pigeonhole yourself. Because if I was to be pigeonholing my pigeonholing myself into like fiery, I would kind of be failing at that today. Right. So the, the ability to break out of the kind of boxes and the pigeonholes that we put ourselves in, that is from the self-healing, right? When you do the work on yourself to heal your shoulds, 
to heal what you've grown up to think that you have to be, to heal obligation and like any trauma that makes you feel unsafe to be your most expressed self, that allows you to shift through all your different flavors and not feel like you need to be this one woman day in, day out. Because if we were to go back to my brand vibes, right? I really allow myself to express all facets of myself through my business. So we have like, you know, from this trip, for example, we have like these Santorini vibes. I want to be like tanned and lay by a pool and, you know, do Pilates and whatever it is, you know, and walk around in a bikini all day. But then we also have these like Paris vibes where it's chic and my hair's tied up and I'm wearing this like beautiful white kind of like blazery summer suit outfit. And then we've got, you know, what else do we have? We've got Venice where it's just like history and richness and culture and Italian vibes. That's a whole, like, there's so many different vibes going on. And it's because I have all of those within myself and your brand is an extension of yourself. If you are running a really authentic, easy business. And I say easy where your business is an extension of yourself. It's not something that you're just like forcing every day. When you allow yourself to embrace these different flavors, it moves through all facets of your life where you are able to have more flow and ease and less rigidity in a way that holds you back. Because rigidity does not help the feminine and rigidity does not help you be in that magnetic state that you want to be in. Flow helps you be in that magnetic state. So jumping back to the Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman is, you know, able to shift through the different feminine types based on her mood, her menstrual cycle, her, you know, environment for the day, what's been going on in her life, all those kind of things. So she can be dominant in one type. So I would, I, for example, would be dominant in um, fiery, but I really enjoy being in flowy and in girly, right? She, the Wonder Woman uh, flavor, when you're in that, the flexibility and the fluidity in her feminine feminine expression is her power. That is what makes her this beautiful Wonder Woman, is that she allows herself to be fluid in her feminine expression and not locked into only one, therefore creating limits in her energetic field and in her life and in her mindset and in her expression and in all the things. So that is the three or four different flavors of the feminine that I have come up with. And I love doing these little, like, it just helps to kind of give you guys snapshots of all the different ways that you can express yourself. So I'll definitely come up with some more. Um, But for those of you that don't know, Queen Alchemy is opening up next week officially, but you can join early. Just go on the website page and the details are there of how to do it. This program is the 12th, this, this round, sorry, of the program is the 12th round and the price is going up by $500 next round. So this is round 12 coming up round 13. Oh, 13 is the number of the feminine. That's so funny that that's all happening in alignment. Um, that ra- that price going up $500 reason why is the telegram group, which is where you drop questions in and I answer them. Uh, you get about 15 extra hours from me where I will answer your specific questions. Like you drop a question and it's specific to you and I send you a voice message or like a written response in detail of what to do or like what's happening, ex- explanations, etc. There's about 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 extra hours that go into that Telegram group. And I've never actually like put that really, I've never really like compensated that in the price. So that's now going into the price. That's, that's why there's that increase. And it's also going to ensure, and hence I'm explaining why I'm adding an extra 500. Those of you that are joining this round, next round, the future rounds, really make sure that you utilize that Telegram group because, you know, this is my most intimate group program besides like, obviously there's one-on-one, but in terms of group programs, this is my most intimate one. Will you get me live? Will you get me to ask questions, answer questions? Sorry, you get me for seven weeks. So obviously I want you guys to utilize it. So if you've been thinking about Queen Alchemy, if you have been interested uh, in it and you don't know whether it's the right fit for you, as usual, guys, just please send a DM. Um, and if you would like me to send a response to your DM, just say in the DM, like, hey, Monica, like, here's my question about Queen Alchemy, blah, blah, blah. Also, I would really love it if I could hear your thoughts about my situation. Olivia will jump in um, to kind of help me out. She'll probably jump in to let you know that the message has been received and I've been notified. And then I will jump in when I can. I'm always happy to send you guys a voice message so that you really feel and know like, okay, she's aware of these messages. Because just to reiterate, I'm aware of them. So much of the time, like I would say 90% of the time, Olivia screenshots these messages and throws them in our team 
like Slack channels where I see them and I give, I give input before she responds. So I know most of the DMs that are coming through anyway. I just obviously don't have the time to answer all them. But if you would like me to send a little message so that you know that I've seen it, I have got no problems doing that, especially for Queen Alchemy and for the Feminine CEO and one-on-one, any of those bigger investment programs, I am more than happy to, of course, you just need to let me know and I will do so. Okay. Please don't feel like you're annoying me if you do that, because honestly, it makes me really happy. (laughs) I love replying to DMs. I miss them sometimes. Um, Okay. I'm going to leave this uh, podcast here. I hope that you guys enjoyed the backdrop and that you really enjoyed this podcast. Please make sure that you subscribe, that you leave a written review if you haven't already. and that you share it on your Instagram story so that I can repost it and say a big fat thank you for giving the podcast so much love and support. I will see you guys in the next episode.